Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2021 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, in conversation with Carl Beidelman, the Director of No Time to Waste, the Urgent Mission of Betty Reed Soskin. This film can be seen as part of both our in-person screenings, which begin September 21st and run through September 26th, as well as part of our streaming festival program, which begins September 27th and ends October the 3rd. All the information regarding the programs can be found on peacefilmfest.org. And now let's welcome Carl to the conversation. Thank you, Carl, for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. It's nice to be here. It's a pleasure to be talking to you, Carl. And you. let's let's just start by um, please tell us about the film. Well, No Time to Waste follows the uh, uh, one woman's uh, mission to restore critically missing chapters of American history. Um, it's the story of uh, Betty Reed Soskin, who turns 100 years old on September 22nd. Uh, she is the oldest uh, park ranger in the National Park Service. She's still active, uh, and she did not become a ranger until she was 85 years old. She, came, she became a ranger to literally make sure that her story, uh, particularly the story of African Americans uh, efforts in uh, on the home front in World War II uh, and and the stories uh, of other people of color uh, were no longer excluded from what was understood to be the history of that of that period. Betty lived that period. She was a clerk in a segregated union uh, auxiliary during World War II because blacks could not be in the union. Um, and when the National Park was being created, Rosie the Riveter National Park was being created, uh, Betty was sitting in on the planning meetings because she was working for a state legislator. And she looked at it and said, my story's not here. <laughs> the, the story that I lived, I don't know what story you're telling, but it's not mine. And so she remained involved in, in sh helping to get that story included in the creation of the park. Uh, she was so impressive to people, uh, the National Park Service, rather than pushing her aside, offered her a job. So at age 85, she became a park ranger um, with a mission. And the way she described her mission is that she was going to change the world 48 people at a time. That's the capacity, the seating capacity in the little theater in the visitor center. And so when Betty started out with this mission, she uh, would speak if two or three people showed up. And what our film follows is over the years how Betty went from those two or three people chatting in the visitor center to what was a growing worldwide audience. She was still presenting in her theater, but it was now packed at 48 seats and people were getting tickets and waiting in line to get in. And then she started appearing in uh, on, on television and in news programs uh, literally around the world um, as she told this story and people heard about this remarkable you know, at the time, 93 year old, 95 year old, 97 year old ranger who is perhaps the most eloquent human being I've ever known personally. I, she just absolutely um, is is stunning. And in her work in the Park Service, what we track also is is how she changed the National Park Service, her impact, this little woman. And as she is little, this little woman who um, at 85 years old, puts on a park ranger uniform for the first time, and she not only tells this story, she's actually changing the National Park Service. Uh, for those who don't know, the National Park Service is really the organization that is the repository of American history. All of our national historic sites are managed by the National Park Service, and the, the, the Park Service has to interpret American history for Americans, and uh, they have taken great lessons from the way Betty has told that story and included the untold stories. So um, I, I think the thing uh, we really try to show in the film is that here is this, uh, this, this small woman who was actually quite shy, overcomes the shyness to pursue the mission, and uh, she has this incredible way of, of um, telling really hard truths 
uncomfortable truths, but in a way that, that people can easily hear them. You can't turn, it's like your grandmother's telling you stories and you, the, the resistance drops and, and, and people really hear the story. So um, I, I was pleased that uh, on, the, on the Bullfrog site, there, one reviewer said, I, I wrote this down to, to quote it, you may never have heard of Soskin before watching this film, but it is guaranteed you will not forget her. And she is truly unforgettable. Well, and Carl, I, I also want to commend you and, and uh, commend anyone who's watching this that they really need to watch this film to see what a fantastic job you did in capturing her charisma and her story. So um, I, you know, I really thank yeah. you for that, um, because as a programmer, that's what we're looking for, these stories that can really inspire people. And you did a fantastic job of that. Well, thank you. My colleagues and I who have done television programming for decades have always said that our job is to get the hell out of the way of the story. And um, we, we, we hope that we had done that, uh, uh, that Betty really, Betty really shines through, I think. Yes, she does. And so how you've, you've really touched on, on the importance of this story, but how did you become connected to and, and get the chance to tell the story? The, the good folks at Rosie the Riveter Trust, who ultimately funded the film, and, um, uh, uh, you know, they, they're really good at what they do, but they didn't know anybody basically in the film or television world except for uh, my production partner, Doug McConnell. And so they made a phone call to Doug just saying, we got this incredible ranger over here. We got to make sure that we document her story. She, I mean, she was already at the time, I think, 93 um and and so i mean you think in terms of no time to waste if if we're going to tell her story we better we better hurry um so i had never heard of her and um i got invited to a meeting and we went to a meeting in the basement of the visitor center and we're we're sitting at at uh, at this long table and i'm across from this 92 year old park ranger and thinking well you know this this may be a project that'll pay some bills let's see the first thing she says is, to, I, I wrote this down. I, the first thing that she said to me was, I've outlived my rage, but not my passion. And when I was able to pick my jaw up off the table, I thought, you know, to talk about somebody who speaks in sound bites, someone who is just a continual quote machine. Um, I, I just thought, you know, how do you, how do you hear that and not sense that a door has been opened into a world that I really got to know more about? And I was hooked from from that first sentence. I was ready to go. I thought I will listen to this woman all day. It was just one pearl of wisdom after another. Um, and um, and she was willing to she had said she was willing to put up with the aggravation of a film crew following her around if it helped get her story out. And so we 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 bonded at that moment. Um, and, uh, the, the Rosie, the Riveter trust had no funds, no money you know, they, you know, they asked the question, you nonprofits ask filmmakers all the time, how much will it cost to make a film? Well, it's like saying, how much, how much does a car cost? You, you know, you, you want to buy a, uh, uh, a little two seater, or you want to buy a, you know, you want, you want to buy the top of the line Lexus or, or whatever. Um, so we talked about what it might take, but we, my partner and I both knew that if we didn't get started, we'd, we'd be wasting a rare opportunity. So we just literally grabbed the camera and started filming. I don't think that the trust raised any money for about five months, uh, but we just kept shooting. And because um, once you start spending time with Betty, all you want to do is spend more time with Betty. And, and, and so it was a constant treat of filming her in front of audiences. She used to do bus tours of the historic sites around uh, Richmond related to World War II. Uh, we recorded three or four of her uh, wonderful presentations, which we use in the film. Um, and then as her story took off, you know, we, we were fortunate to be able to go with her uh, to Washington when she um, got sort of plucked out of obscurity and was chosen to introduce President Obama at the 2015 Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Uh, which was a, uh, uh, as you can imagine, a highlight of her life. So uh, we were fortunate to to get to be able to do, to do all of those things. But you know, when you meet her, it's like you know, it's like I, how how many eighty two year olds at the time do you know, who started blogging, 
in 2003. In 2003, I didn't know what a blog was. She's already blogging and she had 13,000 entries in a blog before she stopped um, uh, uh, writing. So uh, it, uh, there, there was no way to say no. After that meeting, it was like, hey, we're all in. Uh, if you ever, if you ever get some money, it'll be great because we'd really love to pay the mortgage. But we're doing this story. Oh, that's fantastic! Um, and so, so clearly, you hadn't known anything about her or her story before you started. So no. it must have been um, an amazing journey of of learning and and incredible surprises yourself as you're going along and and uncovering her story. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we were we were we decided early on that, that we were we were going to limit ourselves to basically looking at that Betty's story from the point that she she uh, became a park ranger, that her life was so rich before that we thought this this could easily turn into a two hour documentary and not many people want to watch that. And I don't want to spend the next 15 years of my life doing it. So let, let me pick a just a piece of the story that I can tell. Well, then, of course, you have to tell the backstory. But, you know, so I find myself reading 13,000 blog entries and going over to Betty's apartment. And I mean, one of the real as a filmmaker, uh, you know, I would always get frustrated with the crew, how long it would take to do lighting. I say, come on, guys, let's go. Yeah. Oh, God. I never complained on this shoot because when when the crew was taking three hours to, to light the interview setups, I got to sit on the sofa with Betty and just chat for two or three hours, or she'd take me in the back room and show me stuff on her computer, um, or she would play music for me that she had written and sung 50 years ago. I mean, she's just got all these layers that we were not even able to fully explore in the film. She's just a fascinating woman, and she starts telling stories, and sometimes we're we're just rolling on the floor in laughter. It, it's uh, it was uh, it was a thrill, but no, I didn't I didn't know anything about her, so it was a really great opportunity to to get to know her. Well, and I want to go back now to to something you had said earlier about um, Betty changing the world forty eight people at a time. Yeah. And and that's just exactly uh, just to zero in on on that. That's exactly what attracted us to this film mm. was that the mission of our festival is to try and curate work, mostly films that will inspire people, present models that they can take into their own lives and communities to make the world a better, more just, peaceful place. And Betty's amazing eloquence, as you point out, and um, and one last thing that I'll say is. To, to underline something you had said earlier about her ability to deliver very mm -hmm. hard, difficult truths in a way that people can accept them and can move forward with them is, I mean, she's a treasure. And, uh, and so we all want to celebrate her and get her story out and celebrate her upcoming 100th birthday that will happen <laughs> during the festival. Right, right. So can yeah. you tell us a little bit about, you know, um, we see her life. What would she want people to do in order to make the world a better place? Um, Betty's always been really, um, you know, with a few exceptions, has never told people what to do. She she tries to set an example, uh, although I, I, we got a nice birthday message from Barbara Lee who said that she always enjoys Betty showing up in Washington, going around and telling people in Congress to do, how to do the right thing. And, and so th that's the exception. She would definitely tell people in con members of Congress uh, uh, what to do. But um, Be Betty, I think, um, it has been satisfied with with acting as a model. And and what I what I personally take from her modeling is that w w when you ask the question, what can I do? Um, I think Betty is a good example of do what you do. What is it that you're good at? Uh, Betty is very shy, but she is extraordinarily eloquent and she's passionate. She's a storyteller. So she chose to tell stories. She chose to share stories in a way that really resonates with people. Um, and I, I think that's the message for all of us. It's like, you know, when you say, what can I do? The answer really is the question. What can you do? Do that. Whatever that thing that you can do is, do that, make that contribution. I mean, my my uh, best friend uh, I met making, he's an artist and, and he came in to help make 
great boycott signs. Uh, you know, we were we were picketing supermarkets in 1969. He was an artist. That's what he could do. And so he did these beautiful signs for the picket lines. You know, it, it's it's a good example of whatever it is that you're good at. Do that and make that your contribution. And I think that's what I think that's what what Betty's message is. If I can speak for her, it's certainly the message that I got is do the thing that you do and make it part of the contribution because we all she really there, there's a scene that I love in the film that we wrestled about. Do we include it? Do we not include it? And it's her speech that she gave welcoming new citizens. Um, and uh, and she talks about how democracy was never meant to be set. And it's very timely um, that it has to be reinvented and reinvigorated by every single generation. And it's our responsibility to do that because uh, it's never going to be set in place and it's certainly being challenged now. So um, that's it. And, and what do you do about that? Well, it's what are you good at? Do that. That's actually that's really wonderful. Um, and it does so fit with the mission of the Global Peace Film Festival. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of, you know, similar to our approach that we don't tell audiences what they should do. We yeah. present work then and hope that they're inspired to take their own action after seeing something. And we certainly hope that uh, the people watching this film will take uh, this film, no time to waste, will, will take um, take that message to heart and, and do what they do best um, and do something to make the world a better place. So, I think I think Betty I think Betty would hasten to add you don't have to wait till you're 85 though. So, you can yes. do it now. Yeah, you can yes. do it now. No, no matter how old how how young or old you are. Um, so how can uh, also just wanted to mention that our screening uh, at the Winter Park Library will actually be on her hundredth birthday, which is sep September 22nd. So partly uh, one part of this question is um, how can people watching this uh, celebrate Betty's birthday, wish her a happy birthday. Um, and the other part is how can people watching this uh, support your work, this film? Uh, well, I, you can go to uh, uh, our, our website, no time to waste film dot com. Uh, you could actually I think there's a way there to um, uh, to leave a message that we could pass along to Betty. Uh, there's also uh, Betty. Uh, Betty has a Facebook page, uh, Betty Reed Soskin. Um, and there there is a no time to waste film. Uh, I think it's yeah, no time to waste film Facebook page. Uh, I'm, I'm not a real big Facebook user, I have to admit. So uh, but but uh, messages could be left there. And we try to do some updates about, um, you know, the films available through Bullfrog. Uh, and it's it's available uh, individually uh, on there on Bullfrog's Vimeo um, uh, Vimeo site. Uh, so to, if you you know would like to share it with friends, uh, but I would say that at that website, um, uh, the No Time to Waste Film website, they could uh, share uh, a message with Betty. I will personally make sure she gets it because it gives me an excuse to call her up. And then she runs down the hall and she she picks up her phone and and I, you know again she's so way ahead. You talk about you know doing a blog before I knew what a blog is. I'm thinking, okay, I'm calling this nine, my 99 year old friend and thinking, well, I better tell her who's on the phone. So I said, Betty, it's Carl. And she says, I know who it is. She got, you know, she got caller ID on the damn phone. It's just like, okay, I right, gotcha. Okay, sorry. So uh, it will give me an excuse to call Betty and say, hey, I got another message for you. Um, it, it would be, yeah, she's, she's always been delighted uh, by getting cards and letters and messages from people literally all over the globe. And uh, it's a real thrill for her sitting in her tiny little apartment in Richmond, California, getting these messages that uh, it really delights her. And finally, um, what's next for you? Uh, I do, I'm trying desperately to slide at least gently, partly into retirement for a while, but I, I do a film every year for the San Francisco Free Clinic for my friends there. It's a clinic that was started by two primary care physicians who got tired of paperwork and insurance companies, and they they raised some money. Uh, and twenty, God, it's got to be twenty seven years ago now. They they started a clinic that treats only people with no insurance. If you have no insurance, you go there. There's no paperwork, and they're, they're the the film is is used to help 
fundraise every year. So I tell their same story, but find a different way and different people to, to tell it through. I love their work and I love working with those guys. And it was a, it's a good example of you do what you do. I mean, here's two doctors. What can they do? Well, they can they can literally treat people who have no insurance. Um, and um, so I, I will do that. Uh, and then um, time permitting, and I better not wait till I'm 85 to do this, but um, uh, I, I'd like to help tell the story of uh, uh, two people who started an organization that when I was 18 years old, uh, these two people became my mentors uh, who started a civil rights organization in Detroit. Um, two of the most remarkable people uh, I've ever met. Uh, I'd put them right up there in the pantheon in my life with Betty. Um, and um, they, they were the epitome of do what you do. And they, they drew in thousands of volunteers into a movement, everybody contributing what they could do to deal with uh, systemic racism in a, in a terribly, terribly segregated metropolitan Detroit area. And, and it's, it's just a good story about, about people making a difference by doing what they can do. And so I got to find a way to tell that story before all of my co cohorts from that era are gone. So um, I'll take a little break here and, and then we'll we'll start working on that one. Well, that's wonderful, Carl. Well, now that you are part of the Global Peace Film Festival uh, alumni, we will definitely check up on you and you. Uh, push out progress notes uh, through our own social media channels. So. Thank you so much for, for taking time today and for being on this side of the camera. We really appreciate it. And, um, and we wanna thank everyone who's watched this and encourage you to watch No Time to Waste, The Urgent Mission of Betty Reed Soskin. It's going to be a part of the Global Peace Film Festival, but also as Carl mentioned, you can check in with Bullfrog Films, the distributor, to make sure that you can bring it to your community. The website, for the film is, uh, is no time to waste film.com. And again, please go to peacefilmfest.org to find out all the updates regarding the upcoming festival. Thank you again, and we'll see you at the next GLOW. <laughs>